Hello, and welcome to our podcast, The Magical Holistic Healing Arts. I'm Lynn Hicks. I'm Erica Hicks. And here we interview different practitioners from many modalities to find greater ways to take care of our sacred body vessel. As always, we are proud distributors of Kang and Water, the life-changing elixir to our life. Our company is stationed in Japan, and Japan is actually number four on the healthiest nations in the world. One in six households in Japan have a Kangen water ionizer. So they must be doing something right with their health as the United States is number 35 on the list. So if you want any information on upgrading your health, check the links below. On today's episode, we have Jonathan Stalls, who's an artist with Intrinsic Paths, and he also is a founder of Walk to Connect, but I'll let him share all of his magic. So Jonathan, tell our listeners, what is your magical art? Thank you so much for having me uh, be in flow with, with you both and with this podcast and this invitation. Magical art, so much here, but I will, I will summarize it in unhurried human movement, under our true ceiling. Mm. So I just have so much <laughs> passion, wiring, energy uh, for our most inherent and intrinsic form of, of being on this earth, being with and alongside of each other and being in our own bodies. And so whether that is uh, by foot walking uh, or it's uh, on a wheelchair or powered stroller, it's it, the, the, the specific magic to your beautiful question is unhurried, uh, is present, is um, mindful, is patient, is I, I almost picture the, the way our feet are made to move on the earth is actually toe heel. And so there's this, there's a little bit of a roll on the soil that has to be slow because we don't know where we're putting all of our weight often if we are walking barefoot. So anyway, that, that is my magical art in, in a lot of ways. <laughs> well, if you would have heard our conversation before this <laughs> podcast, we were totally talking about walking and on our feet, exactly what you just said. And that's <laughs> something we are deprogramming ourselves is to really be in flow and to be present moment and um what was the words you said you said it so beautifully um hmm I don't know I don't know exactly what was said but for me it would that's people need to slow down to be present to experience to feel the earth to feel each other yes. and yes. I loved the Scott under you know the ceiling mm -hmm. yeah totally yeah, so much, you know, so much of the, you know, the word magic, I think, is so appropriate because of, you know, one of the things I always invite with a lot of different practices related to walking or unhurried human movement is, you know, walking as mystery or walking as spontaneous, you know, walking as, you know, just just this practice of moving into the unknown. Um, because when we're moving outside of our walls, anything artificial that blocks us from you know, the, the uniqueness of a sunset, the uniqueness of how the trees evolve through the seasons, the uniqueness of the colors, the unknown around who's going to turn or walk or, or be just around the next corner or intersection, um, depending on where you are. There, there's, there's such uh, opportunity for, for magic and mystery and connection. Um, and especially when, yeah, when we're present to it. And then what is that? How does that nourish us uh, in all these different areas of our life? So it's hard because this world is very fast paced and that's what it's yeah. been for so long. So slowing down and being the forefront thinkers of that and the new paradigm and the deprogramming can sometimes be hard and looked down upon that we are different and that we are bringing something forward. I mean, my mom's done that a lot of her life, being organic flower farmer. I've been yes, organic since yes. I was born and I'm 20, 28. So it's just, mm -hmm. 
you know, it's the people like you that we need to bring this information forward and to, ke to keep sharing it with our uh, the collective. So, thank you. I mean, likewise, same for the kind of space that you're holding, as in holistic, like natural, as we are made to be. And I think that's, you know, the humanness of this is so important too. You know, it's something that. You know, depending on the perspective of who's listening or who's watching, you know, you, you know, whether it's on one side of the spectrum, you have no choice but to be moving by foot or by wheelchair in this life. And that can be, it, it can actually be violent and, and unhealthy. And, and because of our concrete and our roads, and like you're saying, the house, house, how fast transportation systems have gotten in such a short amount of time. And so... Um, there's that side of the spectrum and then just all over here if you're driving is your primary form you know the the, the to choose to uh, do that less or to rearrange your relationship to the car in a way that is intentional and just but but the underlying soil under it being that um, this is how human bodies have evolved that there is so much uh, beloved science and you know you don't even really need you just once you just go out and move beloveds it will show up for you but with the science the cells the neurons what happens in central brain what happens to the heart what happens to blood flow what happens to posture what happens to our breathing and our creative capacity to uh to dream and to discern and to emerge in different ways from things that cause us stress or things that feel heavy. So I could, I, I could nerd out forever about all these things, but it, yeah, the humanness of it is such an important uh, part of, um, you know, how we, how we connect to, to, to transportation or, or human movement. For me, I know in all of my, um, you know, study and things I've learned from, it's really about embodiment, like where I always say in my book, it's yeah. like there's a bubble. We're like up in the cartoon bubble. Yeah. yeah. And I watch myself if I get afraid or over what or what I can just, you know, you just escape to the side living yeah. and yeah. you're not embodied. Whereas for me, nature and the like, and, and as you're saying, like any kind of movement, I know, in um, Aharaj Yoga, like sound and movement are quicker than thinking. So yes. if you want to be present, you need to hear or move in a consciousness and it gets you out of that bubble. Totally. All of that. I, I'm always in these, I, you know, I host a lot of guided walking movement meditations and it's always this, you know, with a lot of self-compassion because we are brainy people. But like moving from just to move from the mind to the heart into the body, like to just imagine yourself like as you breathe out that you're breathing, you're, you're allowing yourself to kind of dip into a calmer stream, a calmer breath, a calmer and sometimes not calm. I mean, it depends on where you're walking, where you're moving and what you're listening for. And I think that component is such a it's just such an interesting invitation when I think about um, when I think about human like so one of the themes with uh, a lot of the stuff i do related to this practice or this, these invitations is under the theme of walking as human dignity and so one of the things that comes up a lot and and very specific to what you just shared about body-based wisdom is when we're out moving and I, earlier i described kind of that spectrum on one side people who have no choice but to be moving this way they can't afford it they physically can't do it uh, in terms, and I'm speaking of driving specifically, um, or they are legally not allowed to do it, whatever the circumstances are. <laughs> and so when we're out moving on our everyday streets, you know, yes, even on trails or in open spaces, but just everyday spaces and places, what we learn and digest in our bodies around, oh my gosh, it is violent for a lot of us to to feel safe to get to the grocery store the way that we're made to move, the way that we're made to move, the, the way we're, our minds and our hearts are made to process information, the way our hearts are, process, are made to witness other people that are different than we are, the way, all these things. It, 
is actually violent and that it's not just like, oh, we read about it. We're walking like to the body-based invitation. We're living it. We're experiencing it. We're feeling the tension of how of high speed traffic right up against us as we're about to cross the street to get to the grocery store. And there's a wisdom element there that ties us to the experience of so many who that's their primary form of getting around. And then, and then we open up the larger public health crisis around our, me our mental health, our emotional health, our social health. How are we bridging and connecting with each other in more human ways? How are we listening to the planet and her needs in more human ways if we're not moving this way? So there's just, there's so many layers to it. Um, but the body-based wisdom, yes, like that is a loud, uh, a very, very loud and real reason for why um, this is such a cherished uh, practice and way of being, really. So, yeah. Well, it is. And it, it what's interesting, because I, you know, do this on many, well, we're always going to be doing this on many levels and like you're expanding it out to encompass, yeah, just like, whoo. You know, which is awesome because that's what we need. I think, um, you know, there's the world is different when you're doing an, a sinking in yeah. to your body. Like you're using all your senses. Your intuition can come online. That's right. And it, it's so simple but so huge of awareness. Uh -huh. And just walking, you know what I mean? I yes. know I learned eating and all, you know, just walking and feeling yes. that you're on the earth and you have a sky. And, and the specifics of, and this leans a little bit, you mentioned walk to connect. Um, you know, one of the, one of the invitations or a, a huge invitation, and it also connects to walk the, the kind of the walking is human dignity theme. And so when I speak of these themes, I, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not framing those in a way that makes sense, but like, the themes that I kind of work a lot under are a part of this. I have this online learning series called Ways of Walking, and there's 12 themes. One is walking as mystery. One is walking as human dignity. There's another one, uh, walking as vulnerability. And so these, the vulnerability and human dignity theme, uh, are they kind of inter intertangle a lot, specifically around the invitation of walking alongside someone um, and so that, that, that in and of itself, where if we think about conflict, any kind of conflict, if we think about uh, difference, just whether that's religious, political, any kind of difference or physical difference of experiencing the world. So people who are, who come from different cultures and backgrounds, who have different race and ethnicity, people who are different sexual orientations, ages, all the things that to prioritize a, a body-based, vibrational, hip-to-hip, shoulder-to-shoulder, under our true ceiling with all this much bigger space than just inside of walls and across coffee tables and <laughs> screens, <clears throat> that we can, it just like you said, it's simple, but it's so not simple in how we've designed our environments and where we find ourselves, right? Like it's, it's this weird thing. And so to intentionally ask or invite people in our lives who are different or who have differences, which is essentially everyone, but like if we really wanna go into a, 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 a learning environment or an intentional dialogue with someone, to invite them out on a walk and to kind of prompt that walk with some questions that go into those topics because you are then maximizing your capacity to be open and creative, their capacity to be open and creative. Your bodies are both physiologically moving forward and you are under this big, beautiful, spacious like sky that just speaks with everything in it to be humble. <laughs> Because we can't fly as much as we want to. Uh, we can't, uh, we can't just, I mean, we are, we, we are on the earth frumping around. And there's just something about that also. What ha what's possible when it comes to holistic human movement practice 
as a way of healing our differences or, or at least helping us lean into respecting and learning and evolving together amidst our differences. Um, so there's so much there. And Walk to Connect is something that has been just a big passion project um, with a lot of beautiful people to just weave that kind of connecting and learning. So. For me, what happens when I do go to walk to connect, which I so love because walking has become power. You know, like when I walk around, I live in Lake McIntosh and like people are working out and they're no, 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 no. And I'm kind of like in lollygag, like, oh, look at that flower. And I feel like everything talks to me or I make yes. up that it's talking to me, whatever's going on. Yes. And then I hear my head like, oh, no, but you know what? You better get. And it's like, no, then I'm out of all of that. Right. Um, and then to bring it into another person, because usually someone's in front on the trail and it's yeah. like, turn around. Are you all right? But it's not about, hey, blah, blah, blah. You know, the, the, like you said, the slowness, the really embodying right. of the connection now, not just the movement as working out or being right. physical, like the whole thing is. There's just so much to it. So it is, yeah, it, it, it and it feels like, you know, there's so much, I, I mean, I eat and swim and drink all this all the time, but like, it's, it feels urgent. Like it feels like an urgent and not in a, not in a, like a, an oppressive way, but urgent, like kind of like, I feel like, like trees quickly coming up from the soil, just like, oh y'all like be with me like kind of what you just said about the slowing down and and that the flowers are speaking to you you know one of the practices i host is called nature sees me and it's just this you know this meditative like you know where yeah, I, yes if you're watching this video or you're listening i have long hippie hair yes i hug trees all the time confidently and i believe they want to be hugging me back um, and so it is truly like this leaning on trees, breathing with trees, speaking to them, listening to them, because it, there's a, there, it just feels urgent for us to be uh, not only slowing down, but uh, uh, bringing ourselves out uh, of what I often will just call artificial environments where they're just they're there, they're helping us feel warm and cozy with each other. They're helping us feel connected. Even on these screens, this wouldn't be possible if we didn't have these amazing technologies. And like, there is so much calling for us to be uh, tending to um, what, you know, what the world is trying to say, what it's trying to teach. And so, yeah, and, and, I, and, I, and I think back to the body-based wisdom, like what our actual bodies are trying to teach us too. And this is one area that, you know, again, I could nerd out, but just in brief, the, um, the healing capacity, the, where we store heaviness, stress, and trauma in our bodies. So there's a practice called EMDR. Um, and it's basically, it's, it's kind of an offshoot of hypnosis, but it's just that it's just, People are experimenting and trying on these different things because in the human body, when we scan our environments left to right, we actually, we actually engage central brain to the, to the point where we are releasing where we store things. So it's not like a quick fix. Oh, you walk for that and it's all solved, but you're, re you're allowing things to move and the movement in and of itself helps us to heal. Um, not just, you know, our bodies as physical bodies, but our emotional bodies and spiritual bodies. And uh, so it's why pilgrimage, it's why rite of passage, uh, vision quest like invitate often involve walking. It's why protests, you know, I don't want to speak for protests, but I just want to, it's why there's this energetic healing that happens when human bodies are moving on the planet in solidarity in uh, a place where the heart and the body is prior is engaged and and, and um, anyway uh, is there any like tips or um, guidance or advice that you could give our listeners to like be more present while they're walking or if there's a pause or something that could help them 
start this direction and to play with it themselves? Yeah. Um, you know, one of the, one of my favorite, uh, and, and simple practices that can start this is, and it can happen just right outside your front door, wherever you are, anywhere. Um, you know, but I invite that you start outside and if you're, if, if you are mobile bilaterally, then you stand. If you are on a wheelchair, obviously you're sitting and you're just, you're resting outside and you take a couple of really good deep breaths kind of honoring the, like your, your life journey in between kind of the sky and the dirt. So you're honoring the, the soil, you're honoring the sky, honoring and noticing the trees. And from that place of breathing, you just slowly start moving. Um, you could do it for two or three blocks. You could do it for five to 10 miles. You could do it for uh, just a simple circle around your front or backyard space or a nearby park. And I call it sacred objects practice. And you're just slowly picking up fallen, fallen leaves, fallen sticks, fallen pine cones, because the, the, those things will just bring you into their details. They'll bring you into their stories. They'll bring you into their wisdom. And so you might, at the end of this, it might be 20 minutes, it might be an hour, you've got this, you know, you're just these pieces that are speaking to you. Um, and then however you slowly close, you you form those pieces into like whether it's a mandala like a mon like a type of mandala or just a pattern on the grass or on the sidewalk and you're just forming them and and, and kind of speaking intentions as you as you lie them down mm -hmm. as a piece and it's just such a beautiful it's simple and yet it's so intentional and it, and it kind of weaves a lot of the things um that we've we've shared together mm -hmm. so. Well, it's, I love because it's like, um, we, you know, we are the world and life and life is us. And in that kind of practice, you're actually looking at life as though it's part of you. It's an extension of you, like everything and you yes. sink into it and to give it like, and that's where we get that magic space of like, I don't know where time went and, um, yes. you know, like the flow is what I call it. And, and I, I just totally. love the walk part because it's curious, like a little kid. Yes, that's it. Mm -hmm. Curious, like a little kid. That's so it. We always love to look up the animals that we come across when we're walking or in nature or, um, and see what messages they are, because that is another yes. thing that, you know, it's, it's all happening at the same time and it's there to give you yes. a message and there to guide you in some sort of way. So we love to do that mm -hmm. in our practice of being in nature. <laughs> you know, something I, I always plant seeds for too, is just these simple, like if, if you are able, and like, I love what you just brought up around the childlike, like the play component. Oh my gosh, it's just endless what can come up. But to, you know, the opportunity, if you're able and if you have time and if you want to dive in also with, into something a little more uh, longer term, it's just leave from your front door for two or three days in one direction and just go and just go, just boom. And let that like mysterious combination of roads and neighborhoods and have a couple friends or people as backups who can maybe pick you up and work with you on where to stick. Like just have some if you want, but to be of a way that honors that we are all made and have been and that most of the world really still moves seven to 10 miles a day by foot. And so how, um, how can we reclaim and invite and heal and play and honor the wisdom of the body um, in, in so many ways? I do. I think that's what's occurring is that magical, like, let's be alive and like it again. Yes. You know what I mean? Because like, it's Say all thinking. <laughs> and it's... Let's be alive and like it again. <laughs> that. Thank you. Trademark. Yeah. Let's, let's make shirts. <laughs> ah. Woo. I'm telling you. Mm. No, you're telling us. You're yeah. telling me. That's <laughs> but you know what? I think we all want that. Like, that's our childlike, you know, person that because you grow up and there's authority and there's rules and there's measurements, mm -hmm. 
Yes. We we forget like it's not it's not really like that. Just because we made that up and we're doing that and it works in some degrees doesn't yeah. mean it's what is going on here. You know, it's the it's like it's literally a breaking free from those false stories or things. You know, it's and I'm always thinking about okay, world as it is, this is where it is. Oh, this is where it is. It's hard. And world as it should be or could be, and where are we how are we reaching into those places of play that literally break us free from, from those heavy, false, we are playful, weird, funky, stinky people. And it is just beautiful when we, when we can just, I love it, be alive and like that again. Thank you. Yes, that is exactly um, and, I, and, I, and, I, and it also, I think that's what also like bridges us to, uh, to the work of human dignity and justice in this time too, that we, when we can be away from some of these uh, uh, oppressive stories in our own situations, at least trying to exercise outside of them, how much more capable and open and available are we to the, the harm of what those stories are doing to others. And so it's this, there's so much, there's just so much room for it. Well, and I tell you, when you said walk for a couple of days, like, I mean, you know, at first came to me, it was like, oh my God, like there's a trust factor. Like there's a lot to this embodiment and awareness and connection exactly. to the earth of a trust and I think that's where we're kind of locked or we don't give ourselves permission like yeah everything's supporting you but to live that exactly mm -hmm. and and to to live it and to know and I think that's the self compassion but also the like the just the awareness of how far we have how far we have to go to free and dismantle reimagine these false stories because if you're if, I mean, if you're a female, if you are a kind of non-conforming, non-binary, gendered, you know, orientation, gendered person, if you are, uh, if you move through the world in black skin and you just, and to go out and walk for two days, like there's all these different layers of trusting the body, but also trusting systems and people and woo, how, are, how, where are we going big beloved family and how are we healing so and how are we uh, you know with self-compassion experimenting and going into this aliveness you know that that you speak of like it's like all these different layers and um and there, those layers are really important because yeah just going off for two days is so unique to each individual and, and their and their and that trust relationship that you speak of but I love your guys and the youthful scenario, you know, is uh, way more embodied in these principles. Yeah. Um, because for me, like, you know, there's the no hearing it, like we all know, breathe deep when you're stressed. Um, but to, to really, even though your body's probably doing that anyway, um, right. you know, you, to, to, you guys have more of that, like just this walk to connect is... You know, we connected. We, I mean, you created groups that we found people that were yeah. like, and we went and we walked and we connected and we met people. We didn't just hike with people or, right. hey, we, we got rich. We just like tell our stories of our <laughs> yeah. lives. Like we were more present and um, able to really see each other's, I think like authenticity and like feel each yeah. other more than just communicate with words i feel like is what happens i don't know yeah. that's exactly it like that like the 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 um with the without words invitation where there's all this communication happening here like between the hearts and the moving frames and the body with like the body stuff is it, it's just why, like, it's back, you know, I, I link it a lot back to the walks kind of around difference or around conflict or around things we don't understand in, in one another. But, like, to to just to, A, be aware of the nonverbal, like, stuff going on and then to actually, like, invite it and practice it. Like, oh, you know, like, let's start this off with 
15 minutes of just not talking, but let's still move with each other so we can just honor our, our bodies and our steps and, and our breathing. And then we can kind of slowly weave in communication uh, with words and, oh my gosh, it's why there's just so much there. There's so much there. And yeah, so the walk, yeah, so we've just, with Walk to Connect, it's just been a big uh, experiment. And it, again, objectively, it, it's just, it feels so simple. It's like, oh, you're just walking with people. It's like, well, no, like, w w because we're not doing this the way we're made to be doing this, we're, we're, we, we need it more than we realize. And how is it aiding our, um, you know, our, 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 our evolution journey, our evolving journey, our creative discernment journey for our relationships, but also our communities and our politics, oh. earth help us, uh, like our religious like beliefs, all these different things. How are we using what we're made to be doing to tend to those spaces? And I love that you say an artist because it is an art. Like being alive is an art. I don't know why we forgot that. Like I teach the femininity and it's all about artistry. Like yeah. if you're, whatever you're doing, you can make it something creative or sing or so, yes. you know, it is an art to walk and connect and connect with humanity and the earth and ourselves. And our oh, it's so true. Yeah. It, it's always felt like a, a big blank canvas. I just always, I mean, I'm always, I've always been an artist growing up and so the last two years with Intrinsic Paths I've I've left leading and managing uh, Walk to Connect. Walk to Connect is, is now a worker owned co-op and so there's a group of people that kind of collaboratively run this mostly volunteer grassroots space which is so cool um, and I've just gotten more into uh, fine art again but the whole time I've been doing um, walk to connect I would see it and relate to it as an art project because it just felt constantly weaving creating walking routes creating themes creating prompting questions creating all, like ways for people to be making sure that people who haven't talked to each other yet if we're doing like a 25 because we every year we would do like a golden if you're familiar with Colorado's front range golden to Denver which was this long beautiful walk and so crafting how people would relate to each other all day long um, is was such an art form and um, but now a lot of my art like I on my walks I pick up rocks and fallen uh, juniper branches and I make uh, jewelry pieces out of fallen like just ah, I just love it and then I draw all kinds of things out in the natural world so I'm bringing back my sketching and so yeah it, it that there's there's a lot of very what feels like very natural flow related to uh, the artist's way um, as a way of walking, as a way of being, as a way of um, relating to the world. Yes, I'm a painter as well, and um, being an artist is I mean just being alive, like we said, is is artistry, but to also yes. bring that element of um, you know, paint or sketching or nature to your art is is another way to express our soul and our authenticity to the yeah. world to then yes. allow them permission to do the same. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I'm finding my way with art right now. And uh, sometimes, you know, you get stuck and you oh, are yeah. overthinking it, you know, in that brain pattern, just kind of like you are day to day. But um, is there uh, is there any other advice that you could give our listeners about flowing with your day? I know um, you, you when you asked us when we got on this podcast, how is your flow going? And I thought that was such a creative way to ask, like, how are you or how is your yeah. day? Like, how is your flow going? Um, and we've been talking about, you know, slowing down and being present. So I didn't was curious on how maybe you've done you do that in your day or um to help me and listeners to maybe wow. be a little more in that realm that question so much um yeah thank you and yes to just painting and the way you're expressing through art we 
and I just, I, again, I go back to the urgency piece. We just need artists of all kinds. And like you said, all of us alive as artists. So it's not just exclusive, but it's this, the creative realm is needed so much. <laughs> we need the beloved creative folk to be intuiting the way between the lines. Like we need your spirit out there with everything and all your color and all your, so I just, blessings on that. Um, I, uh, I would say, so two little things that come up just as to your question. Um, one, just simply, again, simply, but not simply, uh, the, the practice specifically for creative process to be uh, built into your uh, art, like your painting path. If, so if you're an artist and you're listening to this or you're a creative person or you're in a role needing to be making creative decisions, I mean, to build in 20, 30 minute at least blocks of time where you are out walking and tending to that kind of dissonance or that stuckness because literally the elasticity of the brain releases a little bit and you are literally without uh, thinking you are you are you are physiologically creating more room in your brain to be creative and it's amazing what happens almost every time at least for me but i promise you it'll happen a lot um, if you try it. So just, just building that in as an actual structured element of creative discernment and processing from stuckness. But the second thing that I would just say, and for me, the thing that keeps me accountable to a lot of that, I mean, I don't, I, so I don't drive, I don't have a car. And that has been a huge, I mean, I've, that's been many, many years. Um, I, I don't know that I shared this. I got, I, I got into so much of this uh, I, I'm, I'm so passionate about this. I, I went through my own healing, personal rite of passage journey. I'm LGBTQIA plus. Uh, that was a that was a that was an intense time in my mid twenties. That I, just coming into that place of accepting who I am on the inside, accepting my sensitive spirit, accepting my artistic being, all these different things was was tricky and tough and heavy. And so mid twenties, I just knew I wanted an experience that would ground me and connect me to things that I could better trust. And so um, in 2010, I spent eight and a half months walking across the US. And so 242 days, eight and a half months, like full on weaving uh, stories of people and place and self in, in just, moving in an unhurried way across the country, um, which I, I, it just for so there's so much there that is always wrapped up in, in these, when I say like, Oh, you know, like I don't have a car. Well, there's a lot. I, I I've been investing in this way for a, for a long time and it's actually survival for me. Um, I was suicidal in my mid twenties. And so walking, I had to walk myself out of, false time and into a more truce. Like, so for me, I, I equate it to a lot of survival. I need to be doing this for my heart and my mind and my connection. Um, but, but I think practically speaking to not have a car, or if you do have a car and that's still your primary form, it's replacing trips or replacing partial trips. So coming up with a new, a new pattern for where you park the darn thing. So like, think about a 15, 20 minute radius around all your destinations and give yourself 20 minutes, 30 minutes of walking time to and from wherever you park the car. So you have these more natural uh, and, and linked to practical, right? So I still need to get something. I still need to drop something off. I still need whatever I'm doing but you're building in a more practical radius to tend to what can happen when you're walking and processing. Um, because we have one of the defaults back to our initial speeding up frame, being that we go so fast or there's so much pressure to go fast is because we're in the USA, there's so much centered on consumption that we literally have made it where you leave, you go right outside. If you're if driving is your primary form, you go right outside, you get in the car, and then you drive all the way to the door where you buy the thing. And then you get in the car and then you drive all the way. Like, where is there room for 
tending to body and being in process and unless we explicitly make time for it. And sometimes it's just not easy to do that. Um, or we're not in a great environment where we live to do that more naturally. So that's a long, I'm, I'm getting long, but that's, that's, I feel like that's a, a helpful practical um, a tool for, for keeping some accountability to that. So. Well, and I think, you know what, it's about time. And like, even as you were saying that, like, what a great idea. But yeah. then, you know, you have to think about, like you said, to be creative is to disconnect. Mm -hmm. And then even the act of moving, like you said, a walk through, like I'm in a spiritual school and that's what it is. Like, keep going. Yeah. If like, if you're in a pile, yeah. like move, don't like lay it up. So a lot of it is like, you're doing physical movement, but you're giving your mind space yes. while you're doing it. That's like right. it's a cool, you know, I, it expanded me that thinking because yeah. it, but it is out of what our realm is of That's how nice. we operate. Yeah. And, and like you said, the expansion, it's just, you're inviting expansion. You're just inviting, even if it's just a 10 minute, like think, you know, like <laughs> the, we're inviting expansion. That's exactly how I frame it a lot. I, I, I just, yeah. So amazing. Jonathan, are there any last words you would like to say to our listeners before we end this episode today? <laughs> Gosh, well, I'm just, I'm so grateful you all have hosted me. So thank you for inviting me to be a part of it. Um, if so, walk to connect. If, if group social if related to COVID nineteen, it's a tricky time right now. Um, if you're watching this, it's the end of two thousand twenty, uh, but it's but there are still ways to engage and connect um, with tools and community and practice and sometimes and often online right now. So that's that's a floating kind of constant invitation. Um, if you're interested in just going deeper a little bit with some of my personal practices or just things that I'm putting out there, um, connect to the Intrinsic Paths website uh, and then visit the Ways of Walking specifically because that's a 12 theme learning series with like over 60 practices. And you can just kind of go through that yourself. You can organize a group around it. Um, and then the last little star is I, or I, I maintain so much of my creative freedom through Patreon. So if you are familiar, if you aren't, um, and I was linking back to this need for artists to be freed up, to be intuiting and having full bodied attention on how we create our way forward. Like I just, I, I love Patreon or things like that, that allow artists to feel with like a couple dollars a month nourished to, to be of that way more fully. And so that's how I sustain a lot of my, creative work. So if you want to become an Intrinsic Paths patron, I'd be honored. <laughs> so thank you all for having me. This has been wonderful. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, I am so um, expanded and enthused by that conversation with um, Jonathan because, you know, it really took a lot of simple principles I knew and that I think we all know and we all use and, and pushed it so far out to realize just walking and connecting. I mean, they're two great words. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the fact that he walks everywhere, he walked across the country um, and had such a transformation, transformational experience that he now brings that offering to the world of what he learned from that. And it is simple. It makes me, when I go out running around the lake or go for a walk to be more mindful, more intentional, to pay attention to the signs that are happening around me, the people that walk by, and just to have that um, childlike presence more often because that's, that's what it's about. Yeah, and I think, you know, his concept on flow and just, I think, probably one of the most powerful things was like, we need 20 minutes to kind of disconnect, to like mold our brain out of, you know, it's even kind of like meditation. People are like, oh, it's so hard for two minutes, but just to go outside and do something for 20 minutes with no real goal is what opens and expands our connectivity, our elasticity, our patterning, our ideas, like 
that's a really powerful way to start to find flow. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what did you say? We want to live and like it again. So <laughs> that was such a cool quote my mom said that really did add to the conversation and what Jonathan is bringing to this world because we are meant to have fun and enjoy life and to be in that vibration rather than the hurry, the hustle and bustle that this illusion um, is in front of us. So it was great talking to him today. And if you mm -hmm. want to connect, do his, be part of his Patreon. Uh, all the links are below. If you want to join a walk to connect group, I believe they're across the country. So check that out if there's one near you as well. We had a great experience. So check it out and give us a like, subscribe, comment, send this episode to all your friends and families, maybe someone that needs to hear a little bit more of flow in their life. Uh, we would really appreciate it. And thanks again for giving us your time and your space. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay vibrant and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.